adesso introduco l'intervento del professor Mitia Mori dell'Università di Lubiana, che è uno dei pochissimi ospiti stranieri, che ringrazio moltissimo per essere venuto qui da noi. Prego. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Uh, I will uh, try to present uh, the environmental impacts and challenges of hydrogen technologies. A lot was said and uh, really nice introduction from uh, previous lectures. Also uh, life cycle assessment uh, that is very important also in this case. And uh, all the time uh, they are asking me, but why uh, hydrogen? Because we are talking about hydrogen for 20 years. Uh, I started to work uh, with, uh, on, in this field in 2007, uh, and uh, they are asking me why this challenge. Uh, maybe because uh, I uh, like tough challenges, that's why perhaps I was also a professional triathlete back then. And uh, I also believe uh, in, in, uh, in some kind of, uh, uh, not maybe n not miracles, but uh, uh, how to solve these challenges and to bring them in life. That's why I'm also here today, really, really near the heart of the Giro d'Italia. And I still believe that Slovenian guy can win this Giro this year. Um, yeah, uh, yeah background uh, where I come from. I come from University of Ljubljana, laboratory of heat and power. And back in the uh, days, we were more or less involved in the coal industry. Uh, in the last 20 years, we, of course, have to transform ourselves in more renewables. And also, we were linked with uh, many uh, projects in the last seven years uh, dealing with hydrogen and life cycle assessment. And perhaps today, uh, it will be partly of systematic uh, lecture that how to bring hydrogen in the, on the sy system level and also uh, uh, from one past uh, project that just ended uh, uh, high tech cycling that is what is on the core level because we have different challenges here. Is this the, the future, uh, the, the picture of the future? I don't think so. It will be a mixture. It will be a mixture of the electricity uh, from different renewable sources. It will be hydrogen. It will be all other sources involved. But some outlines at the beginning. What is hydrogen and what are technologies, fuel cell and hydrogen technologies? That was some, somehow explained in the past lectures. Is hydrogen part of sustainable nature? Can hydrogen technologies fit in current energy system? How can, how can we evaluate these environmental impacts? And what is important to address, not just in manufacturing phase, where industry is involved? What about operational phase, where users are involved? What about end of life, where we are dealing with the pro uh, challenges? I don't like the term problems. We have just the challenges and how we make them challenges to, to be solved. So just briefly about hydrogen. So hydrogen as a gas has few advantages over heat engines. So we have electrochemical conversion directly into electricity. And that's why we are not limited with the Carnot curve here that is for the heat engines. So we can reach higher efficiencies in the fuel cell. On the one side, we are dealing with core technologies. We have the challenges inside the membranes in, of the fuel cells. We have the poison, poisonous effect, etc., etc., because impurity of the hydrogen that comes inside our devices. On the other side, we have in infrastructure challenges. How to integrate the hydrogen economy inside this system that is currently present. And I was thinking today between those lectures that I listened, we have the problem of education. This one is, of course, industry to help industry to grow. And this one infrastructure is we 
the people, users on the other side. We have to educate the end users. For example, we have one project that is running now, uh, Sustain Huts. We are introducing renewable energy sources in the mountain huts. We want to introduce also the fuel cell as uh, electricity generation, not the, the diesel that is usually in the mountain huts. But you have to have the personnel there to be able to work with that kind of equipment. That is education of the end user. How we can fit this hydrogen in the current system? Today we have the system consisted of the main players of the electricity producers in the middle. We have the uh, high voltage distribu uh, uh, grid, we have low voltage distribution grid. This is for transmission, this is for the distribution. Then we have consumption that is linked here, where renewable energy sources come into the play in between. So they are linked somehow to both. What about hydrogen economy? Hydrogen, where is the possibility to put them? On the, on the outside. On the outside as the possible storage technology of the future. We have several. We have batteries. We have also hydrogen. We have pump hydropower plants. But what about environmental impacts? We were talking about different products today, about the materials. All the materials in the production phase has some impact to the environment. Assessing those environmental impacts, it's called life cycle assessment. But we are many times addressing just manufacturing stage. By the hydrogen, we, ad we have to address operational stage because the hydrogen has disadvantage that is not present in the nature in the form as gasoline or as diesel as or in natural gas. So we have to somehow evaluate how to put this hydrogen inside. We do this through environmental indicators that are global, regional and local. So we CO2 as a global, regional is acidification uh, and human toxicity, it is very local. So affecting the human health. We are facing the transformation of the fuel from the past, beginning with the wood, through coal, oil, natural gas in last times, and let's assume the future will be hydrogen. We can see this, the trend of increasing the share of hydrogen in the fuels. We can see the trend of energy richer fuels. We can see the trend of lowering local emissions that are particles that are affecting our health in the cities and the trend of lowering global emissions in the, uh, in the use phase, of course. What is about manufacturing of the fuel cells and hydrogen technologies? I was, uh, I was a part of the high-tech cycling project that just ended at the end of April, and where we modeled the system. This is just one example of four technologies that were observed. Alkaline water electrolyzer, outdoor unit, almost 10 tons. These are 13 environmental impact indicators. I won't go into detail because we don't have the time. But let's, what I have to stress out, let's say global warming potential, we know that, that's CO2. And if we look just three systems here. This is control system, this is gas generation system, and this is the main container. That is almost 6.5 tons of steel, but not really important in terms of environmental impacts. GGS system is very important as gas generation system where all of you that are familiar with hydrogen technology, critical materials are involved. What are critical materials? Critical materials here is the list that is standardized. And let's just stress out four critical materials. Ruthenium, platinum, palladium, and also gold in some BOP components as a coating. And those critical materials we have to take care of. Otherwise, the environmental impacts 
really grow. And this critical materials in gas generation systems are responsible to have really big impacts. This table, how you can read this table, green means good, red means bad. So really simple in all environmental criteria. Going from the manufacturing phase to the operational phase, we can produce hydrogen from different technologies. One was, let's say, from Algaia, also exposed in the first lecture. We have also other fossil fuel-based technologies that are mainly today in, the, in, the, in use, but to make hydrogen sustainable, we have to go to the renewable energy sources. Just to present CO2 emissions of different technologies producing hydrogen, so w it is the possibility to produce hydrogen really with a low impact, but with the electrolysis with just wind electricity, also with the sun, sun electricity, not so much with the hydro, not because environmental impacts, but, but hydro in our system is taking the base load, not the peak load, and the excess electricity that should be used in the case of hydrogen production. So excess electricity in the future will be the, 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 the electricity from which we will produce hydrogen. This diagram, I won't go into details. Bigger surface means bad. Lower surface means good. So hydrogen is, let's say, quite good positioned. This is the application of the automotive industry. Because when we go to the petrol station, we want the fuel. And the fuel can be electricity. Europe is really pro-electricity oriented. Electricity can be produced from different sources. And this, the biggest here per kilowatt hour electricity is AU28 mix that is quite not okay. This is really not renewable energy sources oriented electricity. But here, let's say, this one here is natural gas that can be also used in the automotive industry. And the hydrogen is also there with very good result. So taking one kilowatt hour of chemical energy on the petrol station, so it's not bad solution. Just putting CO2 out, you can see that hydrogen from the, let's say, Euro pipeline and the electrolysis, it's competitive. What is in the storage the, let's say, good point of hydrogen? Long duration of time of storage and really big powers or energy. We have all other storage systems but it, it, the hydrogen offers possibility of going even longer. We saw by the boat back there by the Pauli presentation. When we put operation to manufacturing, this is where, uh, let's say, human stupidity comes in. Because when we operate with bad, this is the case of uh, hydrogen generation with the electrolysis. When we uh, produce hydrogen with the EO28 mix, you can see that the biggest share in just one year operation is operation in almost all indicators. But when we go to the wind as an electricity source for electrolyzer, manufacturing is kind of even with operation. So the hydrogen, another point, very careful how to produce hydrogen. Just briefly about the end of life phase that I addressed because the high-tech cycling project was mainly about end of life because these critical materials inside the uh, 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 sun energy um, panels, uh, the critical materials inside the batteries, critical materials inside the uh, fuel cells and uh, hydrogen technologies, is a big question uh, in the future. So this is what the strategy, how we manage this end-of-life scenario. 
first manual dismantling of the system because there is no automotive way to dismantle fuel cell. Then define end of life process for each material involved. Then of course define pro proper recycling rate of each material because platinum in one is bragging that they can recycle 95% of platinum but maybe not maybe 75 so you have to go deeper in each material that is important in this technology what is recycling rate and what are the processes behind this recycling uh, re recycling of each material and then of course calculate environmental balance of end of life and post process result and just briefly if we have 100% of environmental impact after the manufacturing what we can do okay we will leave now operational phase out because manufacturing and recycling are somehow coupled we reuse some parts in this case of alkaline water electrolyzer we reuse the main container because in 20 years why should we throw away the whole container so we did reuse about five tons of steel and we already by the reusing we get that benefits so lowering of the total emissions and by the recycling scenario that I briefly just touched it, we did manage to lower from 100% in manufacturing phase that everything is produced from virgin materials to this kind of, let's say in GVP, almost for, in CO2 emissions for 30%. Because of course, end of life processes are energy demanding and they, are, they need electricity. But nevertheless, with reuse of secondary materials, we reach this. And by the platinum, for example, we just calculated 76% uh, of the recycling rate of platinum. So it was not 95% as, 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 as uh, uh, addressed by someone. So just answers to outline. Hydrogen will be a part of sustainable future will be pr produced from the ex excess energy, mainly from renewable energy sources, otherwise won't be sustainable. It will be for niche applications, not all the way. Europe should also think about not just introducing batteries and electricity, elect in electrification of the automotive industry, but also more of the hydrogen as Jap uh, Japan is doing. Japan is so much involved in hydrogen as Europe is in batteries and in elect electrification of the automotive uh, sector. Hydrogen fits in already in the current energy system, yes, of course. Uh, and to have, let's say, sustainable hydrogen, not all technologies are let's say somehow um, um, uh, suitable for hydrogen production. In manufacturing phase, we have to address critical materials. Without addressing those, we will have really big impacts. Operational phase is never emissions free because hydrogen has to be produced. Also, electricity for the battery charging has to be produced. We know that. We have to educate everybody that they will know that. Storage of Hydrogen has several advantages, as I explained before, over other technologies. And also in the end-of-life scenarios, are, are, uh, these end-of-life scenarios are very important. And important are also because in the future, just few countries are, let's say, sitting on those critical materials as platinum, ruthenium, palladium. So it is also the political tool in the future apart from the oil that is today. So just to conclude, everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it is not the end, as John Lennon said. Thank you very much.